One of the most important aspects of a freight broker business that you as a freight broker must get a really good understanding of is how the money is generated, how the money is produced in freight brokering. And this is tied directly to what you've often heard referred to as freight rates. So that would be a good indication that you and I would want a really good understanding of freight rates. Now freight rates is a bit of a mystery. There's a lot that goes into freight rates, but there's no set formula that gives you how much money you're going to pay for a load, how much money the carrier is going to ask you for the load. Not really anything set in stone. Different people have different formulas, but the idea is to come up with a price that works for you if you're the freight broker, the shipper, and of course the carrier since he has the asset. So we have to figure out the rate game and how that works. So in today's video, what I am going to share with you, who's responsible for freight rates? Who decides what the freight rate is going to be? Is it the shipper? Is it the carrier? Or is it you, the freight broker? Come on inside, sit back, relax. And we're going to get down to the business. So what is a freight rate? And the freight rate is basically the cost that it's going to cost the shipper to move a load from point A to point B. That's what's called a freight spend. That's a shipper's freight spend. The amount of money that that shipper wants to spend to move that load. Now, of course, the shipper is trying to make that cost be as low as possible. He does not want to exceed a certain amount because the more it costs the shipper to ship the load, then the more it's going to cost the end user, the person that is actually using whatever the product product is. So it's important to keep freight spend at a level that is fair amount so that, you know, the prices stay fair, if you will. Now, with that said, that's the shipper. You also have the carrier. The carrier has the asset to move the load from point A to point B. And the carrier has some cost and he's a business and he's trying to stay profitable as well. So he provides prices as to how much he can get a load moved from point A to point B. And he provides those prices to a shipper or he'll provide those prices to brokers. And since we're talking about freight brokers, let's go ahead and cover right now. Why would freight brokers need to be involved in this process when you already have shippers who have the loads, you have carriers who have the asset to move the load. Why would there be a need for an intermediary? Well, let's make it simple. Shippers hire freight brokers and they hire freight brokers for a very specific reason. A freight broker comes in and he says to the shipper, man, you have a whole lot of loads here, a whole lot of lanes that you have to be concerned with on a day in and day out basis. I'm sure I can take some of this off of your hand. I can take some of this pressure off of your hand. I can provide transportation assistance to move these loads from point A to point B. You see, I don't have my own trucks, but I do have a big carrier network that I can go and tap and be able to move these loads for you. And then when things happen in these lanes, you don't have to worry about that. You can come and point in my chest and say, hey, what's going on with this lane? What's going on with that lane? And I'll be able to provide that information to you, provide services to you in that lane that moves that load from point A to point B much more efficiently, much more seamlessly. So these are the three parties involved, the freight broker, the shipper and carrier. And yes, collectively, we all do have something to do with forming the freight rate. But at the end of the day, the freight rate, in my opinion, is not necessarily formed just by those three entities. You see, there's something called a marketplace. And what I call a marketplace is basically the lane, the freight lanes, the individual to freight lanes is the marketplace. And you take your load, you take your asset to the marketplace. And what determines the value of that asset is called supply and demand. When supply is limited or there's a scarcity in supply, and the demand is high, then prices are higher. Let's say, for example, you have a lot of loads in a one area and you don't have as many trucks in that area. So now what happens is the trucks are in higher demand because there's not as many trucks. So the prices of trucks are going to be higher. So let's say that you have a sufficient supply of trucks, meaning you go into a lane and you have the right number of trucks. As a matter of fact, you may have too many trucks in that lane and you don't have as many loads. When you have that situation, then the prices are going to be lower. It's called supply and demand. That's how it works. That's what values your asset. And the beautiful thing about supply and demand is it keeps prices fair. 
Because if I, as a freight broker, go to a load board and post my load, and I post that load considerably less than other loads that are posted in that lane, then I'm very likely going to price myself right out of the marketplace. And that's the same for a carrier who goes and takes his asset to a particular lane. He has to price that asset in accordance to the supply and demand in that particular lane, or he can get priced out of the market. So that's the beauty, in my opinion, of supply and demand, is it's going to keep prices fair, and your job is to understand supply and demand. Your job is to understand the dynamics that are going on in those lanes so you can understand the value of your asset. And I hope that you can see from this video that it's not just about the 15 day average. I know you hear out there that people are saying that if you go to a low board and you use a 15 day average, that somehow stumps freight brokers and you know, you just have freight brokers mystified. And I, I don't understand that. I don't know where that comes from. But the 15 day average is just the average. That doesn't mean that because you give them that number, then bam, they are automatically going to take that number because you came up with the 15 day average. I mean, that's out there. That's obvious. Everybody can look at that, but it's not as easy as just using those numbers. That's what I hope that you can see and understand from this video today. It's about going in and finding out what you can get the load move for, what your assets call for in that lane. How do you, are you able to manage those assets? How are you able to place those assets so that you can offer the best prices in those lanes and make money for yourself and your carriers? So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Certainly hope this information has been helpful. And for those of you who want to learn more about the freight broker business, I'll leave a free link in the description. It's my five video series titled how the load movement process works. Instead of seeing me talk about the business, you'll get to see me in my office actually doing the job. That way you can take a look at it and then decide if it's something that you want to venture further into. And I also leave a free video right here that shows you how we navigate the load boards, how we use the load boards to search for trucks, post our loads, and of course, as a rate sourcing tool to start forming our rate, here's a free tutorial right here. So until the next time, I wish you the very best in your life and business. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.